Hello guys! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're having another Tita Talks and today we're talking about real estate investing in your 20s or 30s or 40s. Actually, depende kung anong age kayo ngayon. I also get asked a lot kung ano yung mga marirecommend kong property developments to invest in and while I appreciate your trust, wala po ako sa real estate industry so I don't think I'm the right person to make these recommendations but dahil love na love ko kayo guys, I actually ask the help of my real estate agent and real estate broker na friend to give some recommendations. Pero puro Ayala properties lang to guys ha. I also got a comment recommending to make our Tita Talks more conversational kasi nakaka-disengage pag straight English. Seryoso na nga yung topic, seryoso pa yung delivery. Ginagawa ko siyang English para concise, para hindi masyadong mahaba yung video. But I understand your comment kasi nga naman, mas engaging talagang pakinggan kung parang nagkikwentuhan lang. So from here on, we'll try to make our Tita Talks more like a casual chit chat session na lang. And yeah, thank you for the recommendation pala. So just to share with you a bit of my personal experience para you'd know where I'm coming from. I started investing in real estate at the age of 25. I got my first condo at the age of 25 and then I got my first lot at the age of 29. By the way, hindi pa sila tapos bayaran ha. Investing early in real estate is one of the best if not the best financial decision that I made in my entire life. Marami akong bad financial decisions sa ginawa sa buhay. We can talk about my money journey <laughs> in a separate video. Masyadong mahaba yung kwento. But sa lahat ng mga financial decisions ko, I can say na ito talaga yung hindi ko pinagsisihan and I'm 100% happy with my decision for two main reasons. First, my net worth increased significantly. I'm not talking about a couple of hundreds of thousands. Ha. I'm talking about millions. Just through property appreciation. Second, since at the age of 25, malaking financial commitment yung pagbabayad ng condo, I also learned to prioritize my spending and at the same time, I've been more creative in generating income. So yung experience na yun instilled in me discipline when it comes to managing my finances. And ito yung unfortunately, hindi natuturo kasi sa school and hindi sa lahat ng household ay natuturo. So a lot of us learn it through experience and I'm glad na natutunan ko yon in my 20s pa lang. Now, why start early, no? You might be in your 20s to 30s and you might be thinking, sige, mag-invest na lang ko sa real estate in 5 to 10 years. Anyway, I get to live with my parents rent-free naman. Wala akong binabayar sa kuryente, sa renta, sa tubig. Tsaka ako naiisipin, kasi bakit ko po problemahin ang isang bagay na hindi ko pa naman problema? When I got my first real estate property, I was viewing it more as a strategic or opportunistic move rather than a solution to a problem such as, saan ako titira in 5 to 10 years? And ito naman, again, opinion ko lang, no? If you're in the situation na libre pa yung pabahay mo ngayon at hindi mo naman pinoproblema ko saan katitira, it's actually a great time to start investing because you have the advantage and you can leverage on that. First, you have less financial responsibilities. Pwede nyo isipin na bibili na lang ko ng property pag tumanda na ako kasi mas malaki na yung income ko, which is likely to be true. Potentially, mas mataas talaga ang income nyo in the future, but also real estate properties are going to be more expensive in the future. When you have your family na at bumukod ka na ng bahay, you need to pay for all these bills, and kung magkaanak ka, childcare, pang school niya, pang allowance. So, Ideally, it would be easier to buy properties in the future, but your situation when you get older and have your own family might make it more difficult for you to get a property na. So your excess disposable income you right now that you use for travel, for shopping, for gala, you can actually use to invest in real estate. Second, real estate properties are more affordable now than in 10 to 20 years. Of course, unless may unforeseen event na mangyari. To give you an idea, yung condo na binili ko, which was a two-bedroom unit in... Pasig area was valued at 3.4 million noong 2016. By end of 2019, it was valued at 7.8 million pesos. Nakita niyo yung property appreciation. Siyempre, hindi lahat ng properties ganito mag-appreciate ha, just to set your expectations. Saswertehan ko lang na may itata yung bridge malapit doon, tapos mataas yung demand sa market, so tumaas talaga yung value niya. May property value more than doubled in just 3 years, Pero yung income ko, hindi naman siya nag more than double in just a span of 3 years. Eh. Ang usual na increase year on year sa mga corporations is what? 7 to 15 percent. Depende kung may promotion ka pa. So, I decided to delay kasi bata pa naman ako that time. 25 pa lang ako noon. this time around, hindi ko na-afford 
bayaran yung property na kinuha ko. Benefit is not tangible, but as I've mentioned, this instills in you financial discipline. Actually guys, yung naririnig nyo sa akin na 12-month rolling na budget and income projection, na-develop ko yon nung kumuha na ako ng property because I need to have my finances checked and I need to know my cash inflow in the future to ensure na kaya kong bayaran yung property. And so far, nagbunga naman siya ng maraming improvements sa aking financial behavior. So why invest in real estate? Marami actually reasons, meron pang tax benefit and all that. But for me, these are the three main selling points. First, real estate property value appreciates over time. Think of it this way. Land is a scarce resource. Kumbaga, fixed lang yung supply niyan. Pero yung population natin continues to increase exponentially. As in 10 years ago, back when I was in second year college, Besh, ang tanda ko na. Back when I was in second year college, yung population natin was at 87 million lang. By 2019, 107 million Filipinos na. And itong 20 million additional people na to, in 10 to 20 years, sila na yung part ng working force. So, maladagdag yan sa demand for residential and commercial space. You can expect na pataas yung trend ng real estate properties in the future. Second reason is, real estate allows you to leverage on someone else's money. Okay, one common misconception sa country natin is that Masama ang utang. Like all forms of utang, dapat iwasan kasi masama umutang. But actually, you can use debt as a tool to leverage and lock in prices of real estate properties while they are still low. So imagine this na lang, kunyari, in a span of 10 years, nakaipon ka ng 1 million pesos. Pero yung property na gusto mong bilhin is 2 million pesos. So sige, tumaas yung sweldo mo, kaya mong bunuin yung another million in 5 years. So 5 years later, meron ka ng 2 million pesos and gusto mo nang bilhin yung property. After 5 years, yung property na yon will either be sold already, or selling at a higher price. So, kailangan mo na naman mag-ipon. So, when you leverage, guys, see you use someone else's money. Like, in this case, gagamitin mo yung bank financing to pay off the property habang mura pa siya. And then, in return, you pay back the bank on a monthly basis the principal amount plus the interest. Housing loan is one of the cheapest forms of debt. Kasi yung collateral ng bank is a real estate property which tends to appreciate over time. So yung risk sa bank, kung di kayo magbayad, tends to be lower dahil nag appreciate yung value ng collateral nyo. Whereas, kunyari sa car loan, ang collateral nyo is kotse. Yung kotse, ilabas nyo pa lang sa kasa, nagde-depreciate na yung value. Kung ako, papapiliin ako ng uutangin ko, uutang na lang ko para sa real estate property kaysa pang finance ng kotse. Third reason is real estate properties can help you generate passive income. Mas sinabi ko, plano kong mag-move in sa condo ko next year, pero paano ko mag-iba ko ng plans in the next 5 to 10 years? Anong gagawin ko sa property? I can actually lease out the property and let it pay for itself through rental payments. So nakapag-leverage na naman ako sa pera ng ibang tao. And then kung tapos ng bayaran yung mortgage ng bahay, lahat ng rental payments sa property na yon will be considered passive income kasi monthly pumapasok siya pero wala na naman akong expense or cost sa bahay bukod siguro sa annual real property tax. Ang haba na ito guys but this part is really important. What are the factors you need to consider when investing in real estate? First one is location. For me, more than the budget, important talaga yung location eh. Kasi ayoko ilimit yung sarili ko sa budget ko, tas pangat pala yung location. Under location, accessibility and proximity sa center. Pag bibili kayo ng real estate property, dapat isipin nyo palagi, in case ba ayokong tumera dito, or in case ba may pangangailangan ako sa future, gugustuhin ba ng mga taong tumera dito? Kaya ko ba siyang ibenta? If it's a commercial space naman, meron bang food traffic dito? Kasi kahit gano'ng kamura yung commercial space nyo, if it doesn't drive traffic at walang pupunta dyang tao, di hindi din dyan magre-renta yung mga businesses. Accessibility is very important kasi maraming mga murang lupa sa mga remote areas dito sa bansa. Pero wala pang maayos na daan. It would take them an hour to get to the nearest bank, nearest hospital, nearest school, nearest commercial establishment. Choose a property that's in the center or near the center na accessible through public transportation. Consider din kasi kayo madalas pumupunta sa work, sa school, sa hospital, sa mall, sa grocery. And also assess gano'n ba katagal yung commute or drive papunta doon. Important ang neighborhood pati community. Ito palagi ko itong sinasabi, no? I'd rather have a smaller lot in a good neighborhood than have the biggest lot in a bad neighborhood. Kamusta ba yung crime rate sa area? Ayaw naman natin mag-isip ng masama na may mga location na mas prone sa mga 
burglary, sa mga krimen, pero syempre, you have to take into consideration yung security and safety ng area nyo. Meron bang security sa entrance sa exit points ng village or subdivision? Is it a gated community? Kung densely packed yung community, meaning madaming bahay, enough ba yung roads? papasok tsaka palabas ng community. Kasi baka mamaya, isang daan lang papasok, tapos isang daan lang palabas, pero sobrang daming may bahay, tapos wala namang public transportation sa area, so lahat yan magkukotse. And baka, siguro nga, 2 kilometers away lang yung office mo, pero it would take you an hour to 2 hours dahil sobrang traffic, palabas pa lang ng gate ng neighborhood nyo. And believe me when I say na may mga developments sa ganyan, sa tagig area. Hindi <laughs> ko na may mention ko sinong developer. Nakatapos lang yung typhoon recently. Flood prone ba yung area? Kasi kahit gano'ng kataas yung bahay nyo, kung sobrang taas din ng tubig dyan, masistress kayo pag bumagyo. So, di ba sa Marikina area, ang daming malalaking bahay. Pero nung nag-undoy, tsaka Ulysses, lubog hanggang bubong nila. And also, gano'ng kayo kalapit or kalayo sa fault line. So, ito yung reason kung bakit hindi ako tumingin masyado ng properties dun sa C5 area, from Katipunan to C5 area, kasi dun yung fault line eh. So, check with the broker or developer kung gano'ng kayo kalapit or kalayo sa fault line. Usually, hindi to din disclose guys. So, just do your due diligence and magtanong kayo, under the location then ano ba yung lot or unit specifications? Hindi lang important yung size ng lot, important then yung shape shape ng unit nyo. Meron kakaibang condo dito sa Ortigas. Malaki yung space niya per unit. Parang 100 plus square meters for two bedroom ata. Pero triangular. Alanganin yung shape ng unit niya. So, ang hirap niyang i-design. Hindi mo rin ma-maximize yung space kasi may mga alanganin na kanto. Pagdating naman sa lots, check nyo kung pa square ba yan, pa rectangular, or sobrang irregular din na mahirap lagyan ng fence. Yung location nyo ba, is it facing sunrise or sunset? Siyempre may pros and cons yan. Mas mainit pag tutok kayo sa araw, pero it's always better to have some sunlight. Kung it's not facing any direction na may araw, ang tendency niyan, gloomy sa loob ng bahay. So, kayo lang, i-weigh nyo na lang kung ano yung mas gusto nyo or preference nyo pagdating doon. Pagdating sa mga lots, where is it situated? Nasa corner ba siya? Nasa pagitan ba siya ng mga bahay? Generally speaking, mas preferred ang corner lot, so mas mahal sila. Pero kung limited yung budget nyo, mas mahal din siya patayuan ng bahay kasi ang laki ng fasad niya eh. Is a lot near the entrance or exit and or amenities? Ang maganda sa malapit sa entrance and exit, mabilis lang lumabas at pumasok ng neighborhood nyo. And pag malapit naman sa amenities, sobrang accessible ng facilities ng community nyo. But these areas also tend to be more noisy. For condominium sa man, is it near the elevator or the common area? Again, kung mas malapit kayo sa elevator tsaka sa common area, ang tendency is mas maingay yan. And also, don't just depend on the count na two bedroom, one bathroom, tapos i-compare mo na siya sa ibang two bedroom and one bathroom. Also, take into consideration the square meter nung bahay kasi may mga 33 square meter lang na two bedroom and pag nakapasok kayo sa unit sobrang liit lang ng mga bedroom ang kasya lang ay single bed and if you plan to start a family that space may not be enough also check the make of the units may mga unit na sirain and meron din mga units na ang ganda ng facade ang ganda ng layout sa loob pero yung dingding nila ay sobrang nipis so naririnig nila yung nangyayari sa kapitbahay Medyo high-end developer to guys. Hindi ko na lang i-mention, pero meron ako kakilala na yun yung experience niya. Ang ganda na interior ng bahay niya, pero naririnig niya yung nangyayari sa kwarto ng katabi niyang bahay. So, <laughs> kung ayaw niya yung ganong experience, ask yung make ng mga pader and yung mga tiles and pinto. Yung next one under location is medyo feng shui na mga paniniwala, but kumuha ko ng condo, maganda yung number na pinili ko. The unit number ends in 8, the sum of the numbers is 8. So pagdating sa mga bahay kasi, mas madaling ibenta yung mga 8. Yung sum, tsaka yung end ng number. And sometimes nga, people are willing to pay premium para sa magandang house or unit number lang. So ang madalas na iniiwasan yung mga 4, 24, 44, dun sa binili kong property sa Porak, Pampanga. May isang unit doon na 4224 yung number. Mas malaki siya sa property na kinuha ko, I think, by 5 square meters. Pero mas mura siya sa property na binili ko by hundreds of thousands. Which is weird, ba Kasi usually, ang isipin mo, mas malaki yung lupa, mas mahal, kung same lang naman ang location. Pero nagmamatter din yung house number, guys. Tapos halos corner lot pa nga yung 40 to 24, eh. Pero mas mura siya binibenta. So, take that into consideration lang din, lalo na if you plan to flip your property. Kasi baka mas mahirapan kayong ibenta siya kung pangit yung feng shui ng numbers niya. Under location pa rin. Ang dami under location kasi sobrang important talaga ng pwesto ng bahay nyo. Pero, 
pero saan ba papunta yung uh, development of economic activity? So, Metro Manila, guys, is very congested and yung properties dito sobrang mahal. I don't think may mabibili ka pang lupa dito na 3 million sa magandang location or kahit 5 million. Usually, mga gilid-gilid na yan or malalayong location na sa center. And yung wave talaga ng economic development is papuntang north and south of Metro Manila na. Ang maganda doon is if you invest in real estate properties now, mura pa sila kasi hindi pa sila fully developed like Bulacan, Pampanga, Cavite, Laguna. Bakit ba to important? Kasi economic activity pushes the prices up. Tapos iba ngayon yung next na airport din na develop sa Bulacan. So, most likely yung area ng Bulacan madadevelop din yon. And ngayon, habang di pa tayo yung airport, can take advantage of the low prices pa sa area. Kasi most likely, mag-shoot up yan. Second factor is yung financial aspect. Dating sa financial aspect, ang unang tinitignan ng mga tao, magkano ba yung property? Yung usual na comparison is price per square meter um, ng similar property sa ibang location. Paano ba yung down payment niya? No? Usually, ang down payment ng properties is 20%. Spot ba yan? Ibig sabihin lump sum. Kailangan mo ilabas kagad yung 20% or staggered. Ngayon, yung mga developers, dahil medyo hirap silang magbenta, they've been more lenient with the payment terms. Sometimes, they allow you to pay the down payment of 20% in a span of 3 to 4 years. So, hindi ba siya mabigat sa cash flows nyo? Yung iba kasing mga tao, takot silang mag-commit sa real estate investing kasi iniisip nila, kailangan meron ka na kagad na 20% property value na excess cash. Pero sa totoo ngayon, sobrang ganda ng payment plans ng mga developers. Yung mga developers na nag-offer ngayon ng mga staggered na down payment scheme, 0% interest pa yun ha. Kung baga, bubunuin mo siya in 4 years, wala kang additional na interest babayaran. By the time na kailangan ng bank financing, doon pala magkaka-interest pag kailangan mo nang i-repay yung banko. At usually guys, yung staggered down payment kasi ino-offer yan sa mga pre-selling properties. So yung dalawa kong properties, yung condo at yung lupa, pareho ko yung pre-selling kinuha para mas madali din for my cash flows. Hindi lang yung VAT and yung project cost ang cost, meron pang mga other costs pagdating sa real estate investing. So usually may mga processing fee yan. Sa condo ko, yung processing fee was 10.5% of the project cost. Meron pa yung mga turnover fees minsan for electricity and all that. So, just ask your broker kasi iba-iba yan per developer. So, magkano ba yung kailangan nyo for um, insurance, for monthly dues, and real estate tax. And of course, sa financial aspect, very important ang budget natin. Remember, given all these numbers, check kung kaya bang i-accommodate ang budget nyo on a monthly basis. But don't stretch it out too thinly na wala na kayo masyadong buffer, ha? Mag-set pa rin kayo ng buffer na money, lalo na kung meron kayo ibang kailangang pag-gastusan. No, not necessarily emergency, yung mga planned savings nyo, like for example, wedding, travel, and all that. Also, check if you have current expenses sa pwede nyo naman pala i-free up. Like, kunyari, ang dami nyo subscription sa Netflix, sa View, Apple, Apple Watch, uh, uh, Apple TV, Amazon Prime, parang lahat na lang subscription sinubscribe nyo. Tanggalin nyo yung tatlo, yung isa lang itira nyo. Okay, tapos yung phone plan nyo, baka excessive naman, di nyo naman kailangan ng 20 gig of internet dahil may net naman kayo sa bahay, so i-downgrade nyo. So, check where you can cut back on to free up excess budget for the real estate investment. Third factor that you need to consider is your purpose or horizon. Baka hindi mag-align yung expectations mo dun sa result dahil may mismatch pala sa purpose mo. Para saan ba yung real estate investment nyo? Is it for self-use? Is it for leasing? Or rent out nyo? Or is it to buy and sell. If it's for self-use, ang benefit nyo dyan is you can potentially avail of cheaper housing cost kesa pag nag-rent kayo, in the long run, mas makakatipid kayo pag sa inyo yung property. Kung balak nyo mag-relocate, eventually, pwede nyo i-resell yung property. If for leasing naman, sa mga unang taon, hanggang di pa fully paid for yung property, most of the rental payment will go to the mortgage. So, wala ka pa masyadong kikitain sa next 5 to 10 years siguro. Yung full benefit ng pag-lease out ng property ay take advantage mo pag fully paid for na yung property. If you want to buy, hold, and sell, you're taking advantage of property appreciation. So, pag buy, hold, and sell, medyo heavy investment nito kasi ikaw yung bubuno ng full property cost eh. So, kung di mo naman siya paparenta, di lahat ng mortgage, lahat ng bank financing, ikaw magsha-shoulder. So, ang benefit naman ng buy and sell is since heavy investment mo, pag nabenta mo siya, lump sa mo rin makukuha yung returns. Unlike mag-passive income, paunti-unti siya monthly. Also, consider your horizon. So, short term ba or long term? Kung short term, tapos magbabay and sell ka, syempre, mas maliit lang yung potential na i-appreciate ng value yan. Pero kung long term mo yan hahawakan, mas malaking potential appreciation ng property. Last, 
part before I give you my recommendations, well, actually, yung recommendations of friends ko, the other market factors that you need to consider. So, first, interest rate. Kung wala kayong full cash to pay for it, malamang maglo-loan kayo sa banko. Magkano ba yung ongoing market rate? Actually, ang maganda ngayon, since nagbawas ang nagbawas ang interest rate yung Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas to encourage spending kasi mas mura yung cost of money, yung cost of loan also is cheaper. So, it's good news for potential investors kasi you can lock in prices at a cheaper rate tapos yung cost of borrowing money to pay for it is also cheaper. And actually, may mga banks ngayon na nag-offer ng low interest sa so pwede nyo i-lock in for 5 years. So, secure yan na in the next 5 years, mura lang yung interest na kailangan nyo bayaran. Second other market factor is ano ba yung current na domestic and global market environment. Aware naman kayo dito, pero di ba currently ngayon may um, pandemic, so maraming mga properties ang binibenta at a cheaper cost. So, pwede nyo sila makuha ngayon at a discounted price and most likely, pag naka-recover yung economy, magre-recover din yung prices niyan. May bagong law na starting January 1, yung threshold for VAT exempt na real estate purchases ay 2 million na versus 3.199 million. Kung bibili kayo ng property, pwedeng bilhin nyo na ngayon December kaysa January pa kasi next year, mas mahal na siya by 12%. Actually, next month. Kasi next month, in just one month, mas mahal na siya by 12%. The last factor, of course, is the developer. Dalawang properties ko ay under DMCI for the condo and Ayala Land, Avida for the lot that I got in Pampanga. Nung kinuwa ko yung lot sa Pampanga, marami nagsabi sa akin, Uy, alam mo ba, maraming mga lots na cheaper naman in Pampanga na pamahal ka dyan per square meter. But actually, when I got the property, I wasn't only paying for the lot, but I was actually paying for the potential of the community. So, hindi lang yung mismong bahay ko or yung lupa ko, pero yung buong community surrounding it. And what's nice about Ayala is that they don't just build buildings or build houses or offer lots, but they build communities. They develop communities. Like, kunyari, yung Novali, which means that businesses and commercial establishments will start popping here and there and would drive economic activity sa area. Ang maganda kasi dun sa Ayala is sila yung nagde-develop mismo ng location. Hindi sila naghihintay na ma-develop yung location para tumaas yung valuation ng property. And also, important sa developer ay ang sales agent nyo or broker. Meron akong broker dun sa condo and I had a bit of problem dun sa sales agent ko na pinagsabihan ko talaga siya. Ever since pinagsabihan ko siya, umayos na naman. Like ngayon, wala na akong problem sa kanya. Okay naman siya, nag-update siya sa akin. Pero ito lang yung masasabi ko when it comes to your sales agent or broker. Kung nakausap niyo siya at nagbigay siya sa inyo ng information at hindi kayo natuwa sa service niya, you can always pursue the purchase with someone else. Kasi yung broker niyo, para yung life insurance agent eh, forever niyo yung kakausapin. Like, matagal niyo yan pakikisamahan. So, kung hindi niyo gusto yung ugali niyan at hindi niyo siya trip, hindi magiging happy yung journey niyo sa investment niyo. So, might as well close a deal with a broker or an agent na okay ka usap. So, with that, guys, here are the recommendations of people I can recommend as well. Uh, yung sales agent ko, nung binili ko yung Alvera Lot sa Pampanga, and yung real estate broker ko na friend, uh, magaling siya. Maayos siya kausap. Nagtatanong ako sa kanya, and she's very generous when it comes to providing information. Just a little favor lang, if you contact them and you found them through this video, let them know na sa akin yung nakuha yung contact info nila. Kasi nagsabi sila na may referral commission daw ako if may mabook silang properties in exchange. But don't worry, guys, wala namang kayong babayaran na extra. It's just that yung commission nila sa sale, mababawasan to share it with me. Ayan lang. So, let's go through the properties na recommend under Ayala Group of Companies. So, the first one is with my sales agent and it's the Avida Aldea Grove Estates. Actually, isa pa to sa mga tinitignan ko na properties bilhin. This is located in Angeles, Pampanga. A few kilometers away from Marquee Mall, which is near the exit ng NLEX. Meron sa lang current na promo na 150,000 peso discount if you can settle 10% spot down payment by December 11. Yun lang, sorry guys, medyo late ko to ma-upload. December 11 ko siya ma-upload. So, kung kaya nyo makipag-usap sa kanya right now, pwede nyo pang masecure 150,000 discount. Sample computation lang for 150 square meter na lot. Yung cost ng property including VAT is at 3.7 million pesos. So, kung nag-spot down payment kayo ng 10%, pero kayo 150,000 discount, ang kailangan nyo lang ispot na down payment is 351,000 pesos. And then, for 48 months, ang monthly down payment nyo lang is 7,700 pesos. As in, super affordable, guys. And then yung around 3 million balance, ni ko sure ilalagay ko na lang sa screen yung numbers, needs to be financed through bank. Second development under my real estate agent is the Avida Parkfield Settings Pulilan. So isa din ata to sa mabenta niya. 
And actually guys, nung nag-recommend ako sa real estate IG story ko, walo daw yung nabenta and maganda yung feedback dun sa real estate agent ko. Ah. Katawa yung mga bumili dahil maayos daw kausap yung agent ko. So hindi naman ako napahiya na i-recommend siya. Pero ang handle niya lang kasi is Avida. Yung other friend ko, handle niya lahat ng properties under Ayala, Amaya, Avida, Alveo, Ayala Land Premier. But anyway, dito muna tayo sa isa pang development. So yung um, Avida, Avida Park Field Settings, Pulilan, it's located in Bulacan, it's 1.8 kilometers away from Robinson's Pulilan. So, malapit siya sa center, 144 square meter na lot, 2.9 million pesos yung project ko. So, it's fairly affordable, no, para sa Ayala property. And may option kayo na no spot down payment. Ibig sabihin, wala kayong initial na i-out, zero yung kailangan niyo i-out, reservation fee lang of 20,000, and then monthly amortization of around 12,000 pesos until 2023. Tapos after nun, kailangan nyo na mag-bank financing kasi ito turn over na yung property. Yung agent ko for those two properties is JB. Contact nyo na lang siya through the numbers on the screen. I also told him na ira-recommend ko siya sa inyo. Now, yung mga next properties naman recommended sa akin ng sorority sister ko. And meron ditong Cebu and Davao sa pagkakaalam ko. And her name is Jewel. So, contact nyo na lang din si Sis Jewel for your queries sa mga next na properties. Medyo madaming binigay sa akin si Sis Jewel at hindi ko siya memorize. So, magkukodigo tayo habang nag explain ako. First na recommend niya is the Palms Lakeshore and it's ready for occupancy. Yung unang dalawa ko kasing sinabi, pre-selling sila. And yung location niya is in Lakeshore, Mexico, Pampanga, right beside the Mexico exit. So, very accessible yung road sa kanya. And meron siyang options na townhouse and single attached home. So, for townhouse, meron silang two-story option, three-bedroom and two-toilet and bath. And yung contract price is just 1.8 million pesos. You can settle the 15 down payment uh, for 12 months uh, at 22,000 pesos per month. Bank financing na after nun. Tapos pwede na kayong mag-move in pag nasettle na yung first 15%. Now, for single attached home, meron silang unit na two-story, three-bedroom, and two-toilet and bath. Total contract price is 3.7 million. So, you can pay off the 15% down payment in 12 months at 44,000 per month. Tapos, same with the other one, pwede ka na mag-move in. Pag na-settle na yung 15% na down payment. Meron ding Avida setting sa Batangas. And, ang sample computation is for 176 square meters. Ang contract price na lang is 2.7 million pesos. May option din na wala kang spot down payment. So, yung 20% down payment yung staggered for 5 years at 8,650 pesos per month. Tapos after nun, doon yung isasettle yung 80% through bank financing na. Mga interested pa rin sa Laguna, meron pa rin namang ino-offer na property sa Novali. So we have the Amaya Series Novali. And yung Amaya guys, ito yung mas affordable line ng Ayala Land Group of Companies. Amaya Series Novali actually newly launched lang siya this December 2020. And it's a townhome. Yung inner unit cost niya is at 3.1 million pesos. So, may nakatayo na dyan, guys, ha? Tapos, 10% spot down payment of 382,000 pesos. And then, around 6,800 pesos for the next 30 months to settle the 5% down payment. Tapos, yung 85% remaining balance will be paid through bank financing. Alright guys, so that is it for a real estate investing in your 20s. Ano outro yun? Ba't ganun yung bosses ko? But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this chit-chat na ako lang naman yung nagsasalita. And sana na-enjoy nyo yung mas conversational na tita talks. Gather ako ng questions sa aking IG story, pero sobrang haban tong video na to. So I'm planning to do a part 2 for real estate investing um, where we answer your most asked questions. Questions. So, thank you guys for watching and tulog na me after ko mag-edit. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you on my next video. Bye! Namaos na ako. Ang tagal ko nagsasalita. Ito yung sinasalita.